Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I figured it was about time that we filmed an updated Glam Over 40 makeup tutorial. I have a lot of women that I talk to that always say I could never wear glitter eyeshadow or I could never wear skinny jeans or I could never wear certain things because society makes you think that you can't wear things and do things when you become a certain age which I think is really crappy and I don't go by those rules. So today we're going to do my Glam makeup look. This is something that I go to all the time if I'm going to an event or if I'm going to a party which I never do or if I'm going out or just if I want to feel really good about myself it's simple it's not complicated but it's going to take care of all of these age spots and all of these wrinkles so um, if you would like to see how to do it learn a few quick and easy steps um, stick around subscribe because it really helps my channel out and let's get started <laughs> So let's get started. So some of the products that I used in my last Glam Over 40 video have changed and some of them have stayed the same. That's just because they're that good. But we're going to go in and prime the face. Priming the face is going to set the foundation for the makeup application. It's very important. Skin care is very important because guess what? Your makeup is only going to look as good as your skin does. So you always want to do your skin care. I went ahead and primed my face. I used the Glowy. Let me bring this back because my lighting is just acting like a fool today. This is the Glowy Makeup serum from Laneige, Laneige, however you say it, but I've already applied this to my face. So the next step is we are going to get rid of these freckles and these age spots that you get because no one told you it was bad to lay out in the sun when you were a kid. You get in the tanning bed, you laid out in the sun, on the trampoline with some baby oil, and you thought you were fabulous. And now you're paying for it. So we're going to go in and cover these freckles up. So I'm going to use the color canvas paints. Now this is by Hank and Henry. These come in. Why is my, I'm going to just start having to hold my stuff back here. Why is my camera washing it out? Um, these come in multiple colors. You can use this color because it's more of a neutral color as a concealer to cover up the spots or they have ones that are blue and pink and yellow that you can use as eyeshadow bases. They are fabulous. So today we're going to go in with the W2 color. It comes in a little squeezy tube. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on my hand and then we're going to apply on the face to get rid of this stuff that we don't want to see anymore. So I've squeezed a little bit out on the back of my hand and I'm just going to go in with a flat concealer brush and just cover these spots up. Now you don't have to cover every single place up on your face, but cover up the places that um, bother you or places that you don't like to show through. Um, I wish I could cover up every single freckle, but you know, I just have too many. Okay, so magically my camera stopped recording and I didn't know. So we're going to move on and we're not going to let this stop us. So I went ahead and put, I blended that W2 Color Canvas Concealer out and I also went ahead and put my foundation on, which you totally missed. So we're going to go over what I used. I used the Huda Beauty, which is quite lovely and dirty, and also the Urban Decay All Nighter. I mix these two together because one is too light and one is too dark, and I like the color that it ma makes for my foundation. It matches a little bit better than using them separately. Totally don't have to do this. It's just what I like, and remember, they're very full coverage, very matte foundations because I have oily skin, so just remember that when you start to use one of these, depending on your skin type. Um, so I mix them on the back of my hand. I went in with my Beauty Blender, and we put it all over the face, and the camera did not catch it so I apologize but we are going to keep moving and this is not going to stop us so the next step is concealer all right so the concealer we're going to go in and use is the elf camo concealer now this is a great value because it's drugstore it's literally like six bucks it comes in a million different colors the only throwback is it smells kind of like paint thinner but I just kind of move over that and don't even think about it so we're going to go in and we're going to put a little concealer under the eyes now there's always different opinions about concealer on the internet everybody's like don't do the triangle if you're this age don't do this if you're this age you do what you want and some days I put a little some days I put a lot it just depends so I'm going to go in and I think this is the color light peach I don't really like my under eyes to be really bright because I feel like it emphasizes a little bit of the hollowness that I have because I'm older so we're going to go in and uh, we're just going to cover up just a little we're going to go kind of on the in-between scale today so I'm just going to put a little bit here 
and then a little bit there. Same on the other side. And I'll just turn the doe foot over and just go a little bit down the nose, the chin, and a little bit on the forehead. Now, if you will realize whenever you start to blend the concealer out, the areas that you don't necessarily have concealer, like right here, it's going to blend because you've got enough and it's going to blend and cover those areas anyway. So you don't necessarily have to do the whole triangle thing, but if you want to, you do it because um, I don't know who thinks they make these rules. Um, you do you, you know what I mean? So we're going to go in with the beauty blender and we're just going to blend this out. I start with the bottom and then work my way to the top because I like the concealer under my eyes to sit a little bit longer than the rest of the concealer. So I go in and I take it up towards the temple because we all want that lifted eye look, okay? We definitely don't want our eyes to look droopy. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for droopy eyelids. And I did not put the foundation on my eyelids just because I am older. My eyelids do have some creases in them. So it's just too much product if you put foundation and concealer and you set it with powder. Then it's going to have that crepey look and it, it's too much on your eyelids. So I take what's left over on my Beauty Blender after I do my concealer. And then I use that to um, take the discoloration out of my eyes. So I use the bigger part underneath my eyes here and then to get into the inner corners I just flip it over and use the smaller part of course. Now I'll take what's left over on the end slightly. I don't really go in the inner corner as much because I find that the foundation likes to gather there and it gets too much so then I'll just take the end of the beauty sponge and brush it through, just like that. So now we have our concealer. Another step that I don't think I did this step in my original video, I don't know, adjust my chair, um, is cream contour. You can totally skip this step if you want to, if you're not comfortable with it, but I think it brings a little bit of extraness to the look because now you can see my face. There's no dimension. There's no anything. It's very flat, very boring, just the concealer. This is the base. So now we've got to build it up to bring back some life. And so I think the cream contour kind of starts that off with us. So we're going to go in with, where's my cream contour? I thought I got it out. Oh, it did. Did I? Yeah, it did. All right. So... <laughs> I'm going to get it together. I'm going to go in with the Huda Beauty. This is the Fair Shade. This is the Tantor Contour and Bronzer Cream. I'm going to use this to start bringing some life into my face. I just don't have enough room up here. I'm just going to have to, uh, I need a little side table instead of having to like reach on the floor. So this is what it looks like. I know it's a little bit intimidating, but it's not, okay? Once you get it on your face, it blends out so well. Um, so go for it. I literally bought this and kept it for the longest time because I was scared to use it because I was like, I don't want to mess my makeup up. So I'm going to go in a little bit higher than I normally do. I have started doing this and realized that it actually works better and lifts your face a little bit more. So normally you would go from the tip of your ear to the corner of your mouth, but we're just going to go a little bit higher, almost to where you would put your blush. And it's going to feel funny. You're going to be like, I'm totally putting makeup in the wrong spot, but trust the process. So we're going to go here and we're going to bring it a little bit higher. I like to bring mine and I always get my hair in it a little bit further down. Now just be careful because the more you bring it towards the corners of your mouth, the more you're going to get that look. Um, and if that's not the look that you're going for, just stop a little bit sooner before you get there. I'm trying to like look in the mirror, look in the camera, look everywhere. And we're just going to bring it. And sometimes you get one a little bit higher than the other, but that's okay. We're going to go on the forehead. And don't panic. This is the part to where I remember when I started like doing cream contour and practicing with it that I thought, oh no, I have just messed everything up. But you realize that you don't because this blends out wonderfully. We're going to do a little bit on the chin. 
I don't normally do the chin if I'm just like going to work or places like that. But um, we're going to pretend that we're going to a red carpet event or somewhere fabulous. <laughs> so that's why we're doing the most today. So we're going to go in and I'm going to use that exact same sponge and we're just going to blend it out. You want to blend upwards. Don't ever blend downwards. You want everything to be lifted. So when you go in, take the sponge and push it upwards just like this. And you will see how easy it blends out. And when I get to the forehead, I just start to stamp like this. Place that down. And we're going to get this side. And you will see how much life that it brings to the face. Just a little bit of warmth so you don't look so basic or so washed out with just the foundation on. And I find that a lot of older women, because you know, you go to town or you're in a store or you're, you meet somebody and I automatically look at their makeup. Not because I'm judging, just because I'm a makeup person. That's just automatically where my eyes go to. I find that a lot of women will just put foundation on, maybe a little bit of powder and not even put blush on and it just looks flat. So I think even if you just put foundation and bronzer on, the bronzer and the cream contour is gonna warm your face up and bring life into your face. And us older women, we always need a little life brought into our face. So don't forget, which I always do, is to contour underneath and blend this out. And I like to bring it down on the sides. I'm still making sure my camera is recording. All right, so the next step is to go in and set this foundation and concealer and everything you have done so far. I'm gonna use a loose powder because I have oily skin and my skin can tolerate loose powder. So I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop even though you can't see it. It is ColourPop and it is the translucent powder. We're gonna go in, I use the sponge. I go in and set my eyes first and my nose and then I go in and set the rest of my face. Because I do work um, as a nurse, I do have a mask on, I feel like 24 seven. Um, so I always wanna make sure that my makeup stays on. So I really, really set it. And I know some people are gonna be like, that's a lot of powder. I know it's a lot of powder. Like I said, my face can handle it. Just be aware of what type of skin that you have so you can kind of, kind of um, tailor your needs as to how much powder you're gonna put on your face. And then I just let that sit. Isn't that pretty? That's just so attractive. I let that sit while I go ahead and powder the rest of the face. I don't put as much on the other areas, but you wanna make sure that you set all of that hard work so it won't rub off. And we're just gonna go in and use the stamp sponge to blend in the powder. All right, so we've got the powder on, the face is set, now we're gonna go in with the bronzer. So I really like BH Cosmetics. It's very affordable. You can get it in Ulta. They also have really great deals on their website. So today we're gonna to be using the Belgian Waffle Palette. Has some highlighters and some bronzers, but we're only gonna be using the bronzers for today. These two colors right here, and I'm gonna go in with a big fluffy brush. This is from Hank and Henry, and this is the Sandra brush. This is named after Sandra Deluxe, who is fabulous. Her skin is like butter. Like, I love this woman's skin. If you ever watch her, she does have a YouTube channel. So we're gonna go in with a big fluffy brush, and we're just gonna start to bronze the skin. Big circular motions on the cheek. And then we're just gonna carry it up. And in the same direction as we did with the cream contour. And we're gonna make that perimeter of the face all the way around. Going back in. And I really like this bronzer because it's not very heavy. It's very buildable. So if you're kind of like on the fence about trying bronzer or if you're new to it, you don't have to worry about it just saturating your face and like a big <laughs> bronze helmet. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be very buildable and very easy to work with. And it's cheap. <laughs> so we always like that. I need to invest in some BH Cosmetics, some more eyeshadow palettes. We're actually using the BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palette for the eye look today, which I don't even know if they make anymore. Which I will never understand why you have a fabulous, you know, product. And this is goes for like any makeup company that does very well. And then all of a sudden, ugh, my nose is itching, of course, it gets discontinued. And I'm like, why? Why are we 
really discontinuing a product that everybody loves. Just a lot of the MAC lipsticks discontinued. Some foundations discontinued. So I'm going to have to look and I will put in the uh, info box below the video if this um, if the eyeshadow palette is still available. I know this Belgium waffle palette is available because I just bought it. So we're just going to put a little bit on the nose and a lot of times if I feel like my under eyes are getting a little bit washed out, I just take what's left over on the brush and brush it underneath. Just like that. I'm making sure that my camera is still recording because we are hell bent on getting this video filmed today because I work so much, I never have time to film and I actually have a couple of days off so I'm trying to make use of my time while my son is at school because when he comes home I know he's going to be loud and obnoxious. So we're going to try to get this filmed. So we're going to go in with the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. Now I know Kat Von D Beauty is not in existence. It is now K uh, K KVD Beauty. Let's try to get it together. I don't even know if this is still available. I use this because I'm trying to use it up because I bought it and uh, I want to, you know, not be wasteful. But you can use um, any bronzer, um, I mean contour. So we're going to go in mm, these two shades right here on the end. I'm going to take an angled brush, which I should have picked up off of the floor. You guys are getting to see all the imperfections today, but we're just going to roll with it. We're going to go in with an angled brush, and we're going to do a little bit of contour. I'm going to mix these two shades together. Now, when you do this, don't panic. It's going to look like a big stripe on your face till you blend it out, but trust the process, as I always say. So I'm going to start um, right here, right below my cheekbone, and I'm going to press it upwards. Now, that looks like a big old whoop de doo Uh-oh, we messed it up, but... You're not. You're going to go in and you're going to do circular motions. Well, I did go a little heavy handed with that and we're going to, we're going to blend it out. And if you get a little bit too much, which I think I did, not surprisingly that I got a little heavy handed with my makeup, um, I can go in with my beauty sponge and we can totally take a little bit of that off. So go into the sponge. and sponge it out. I can't see it on the camera. Now we're going to go with the other side. I need to research and see if this palette is still available. I don't know if they make it anymore only because she doesn't own the company anymore. Somebody else does and so they're making different products under which blows my mind. Why is it still KVD when she doesn't own it anymore? You could think of like changing it to something else. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to contour just a little bit and bring that up towards the cheeks. Right there. This is a totally optional step. I used to like not do this and I kind of, once I wanted to learn how to do it, I had to experiment. I had to kind of build my confidence up into contouring my face a little bit. But once you do it and you figure it out, you're like, wow, I like can't believe I've been missing this step the whole entire time. So now we're gonna go in with some blush. And I need to, I'm gonna invest in a little cart from Amazon and put right here because these drawers and these wires we just got to get it together. So we're going to go in with the Rouge Romance. So this is by Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Why are we not focusing very well today? I don't know. So this is what the inside looks like. This is one of her blush palettes. Now there's two of these palettes. This is the Rouge Affair. I have the other one. I don't know what it's called. But we're going to go in with these two bottom shades right here. And the camera's washing them out. But they're a little bit pinker than the camera is actually showing. So... We're going to go in with a blush brush. This is the Hank and Henry brush. This is the Francis brush. So we're going to go in and we're going to do some blush on the cheeks. Now I like to do big circular motions here. Now I put on a lot of blush and I know it's going to look like a ton in the camera, but you have to remember on me and probably a lot of other people, blush fades the first. Like once I get done with my makeup, you're going to be like, what happened to all that blush you put on? It seems to want to disappear on my face. I don't know why. So I load it up and sometimes I even have to like go back in and um, put some more on. I like to bring it down the nose just like that and carry it up into the temples all the way through here. All the way up. 
Now, the next step is one of my most favorite steps that I learned. Um, I took some uh, a class at the Makeup Institute, a course actually, um, a couple years ago, and my friend Yasmin taught me about this little step. And you would never think about once you get to this step to spray water on your face. And I would be like, why would you do that? Because you would mess your makeup up, right? Well, you don't. So this is one of the steps that I have been using for years. This is the Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray. You can use any kind of a facial spray. I just prefer this one. It's a good price. There's different scents and different flavors. But you're going to take this and you are going to spray your face. It's going to make the powder and the cream and everything that you put on your face blend together. So we're going to spray it and then we're going to take our sponge and we're going to go over the face just to make sure that there aren't any little water spots left, you know, because sometimes these sprayers are not the greatest. So we just want to make sure that any little spots on the makeup is blended out into the skin. Just like that. And it comes in different sizes. That's the smaller travel version, but they also have a larger one. So next, we're going to do highlighter. So while your face is still a little damp from that rose water spray, you want to go in with your highlighter because it's going to help melt it into the skin a little better. So I'm going to go in with the Jaclyn Hill. This is her highlighter in ice. I'm a big Jaclyn Hill fan. I know a lot of people have various opinions, but I think she's fabulous at makeup. I think her products are fabulous, and I own just about everything she has come out with. So we're going to go in with just a big fluffy brush, and we're going to go into oh, Let me show you what it looks like, actually. It's very pretty. We're going to do a little bit on the upper lip. A little bit on the tip of the nose. You could go down the whole entire nose, but my nose has been broke twice and we don't want to highlight that. And I go just a little bit on the cheeks and then I like to carry it up into the brows, just like that. Just to give that brow a little bit of pop. So when I actually do my brows, there's a little bit of a highlight. Isn't it pretty? It's just so pretty. I love her products. So next we're going to go in and do brows. I'm not going to do my brows on camera because they can be long and boring sometimes, but I do have a in-depth brow tutorial that I posted before I'm going to post this video. It's the last video that I posted if, you're gonna, if you want to see how I do my brows. So I'm going to jump off camera. We're going to do the brows and we'll be right back. Okay, so brows are done, and what a difference a brow can make. I mean, that's all I got to say. So we're going to go in, and this is one of the easiest glam looks that I have found. That This is like the thing that I go to. I know it's going to look good. I know it's going to be quick, and it, I just always adore this look when I when I do it. I'm just like, this is just this is just my favorite. And I always try to so you need to try something else, but I always go back to it. So we're going to use the BH Cosmetics Oasis palette. Now, this is the palette I was talking about. I'm going to have to check and see if it's still available, but it's just two browns and a highlighter and I think if you have two browns and a highlighter you can recreate this look and this palette is beat up because it is very loved so we're gonna go in with this brown here and then on the bottom this brown here and come on fix lighting and then we're gonna go and this is actually a highlighter and I'm gonna use that in the inner corner and we're gonna use one brush. Yes, I said it. One brush. One big fluffy brush. This is the Savvy Brush by Hank and Henry. Savvy Savannah. Fabulous makeup artist. Love her to death. She's so sweet. We're going to go in and we're going to start with that lighter brown. We're just going to put it in the inner corner. Not inner corner. Lord, let me get it together. In the crease, a little bit above the crease, we're going to do windshield wiper motions and just blend it out. So I'm going to start here, right here a little bit above the crease, and we're just going to go small, and then we'll start to just kind of blend it out. Does not have to be perfect. You just want it in the crease, a little bit above the crease. I do that because I have hooded eyes. And well, not too bad hooded eyes, but they're a little bit hooded. So I'm gonna carry it all the way out to the corner here. Sometimes I'll go back in and just kind of make sure that there's enough right there on that outer corner and it's okay you're going to leave the inner corner blair blair blank and, and bare at the same time i mean like i'm just making up words um you're going to leave it blank and it's okay if there if there's some shadow that gets on there because the highlighter is going to cover it up so we're just going to go circular motions just like that on each eye i'm going to go ahead and go in with the brown 
the darker brown and we're just going to concentrate that on the outer corner just to bring a little bit more depth and a little bit more warmth just like that very simple very easy and always remember your placement on the brush. I like to tell people this, if you're just learning how to use brushes and you haven't been very comfortable with them, um, if you hold it back further on the barrel, you have a lot more movement. If you white knuckle it, as I call it, up front, look how much movement you have. You don't. So you can either hold it, I usually kind of prefer the middle or a little bit further back. It gives a lighter stroke and it's not so, it gives you more control over how much product that you put and it's easier to blend it out just like that. I mean, that's all there is to it. So now I'm just gonna take my finger, go into this highlighter, any highlighter will do. You can actually still use the highlighter that you used on your cheekbones. Um, will work well as, work, work as well. I mean, like, can I speak? I literally, my work this week has just done me in. So <laughs> I'm hanging on by a very thin thread. So we're just gonna go in with the highlighter right here in the inner corner almost give it like a somewhat of a cut crease look just by using this and not having to go in with concealer just like that and then we're going to take the brush and we're going to go right there on the outer corner and blend that highlighter and that shadow together just like that and that is it people that's all we're going to do on the eyes but the liner that you put on the lashes and the lip is going to bring it all together so i'm going to jump off camera we're going to do the other eye and then we'll come back and finish the eyes up okay so now both of the eyes are done very simple two browns a highlighter one brush and like your finger that's all you need like it's so simple to create so I'm not, now i'm going to show you the products that i'm going to use to finish off the eyes we're going to go in with the hank and henry uh blickety brown liner i always give this as a tip this liner is fabulous i have gone through multiple different kinds of liners from kat von d to benefit to one size and they all seem to dry out very very quickly this one is very glidey is like a, as how i like to call it it glides on product stays in you know when you're writing with the pen and the pen is up like this and then it dries out and it like skips this does not do that so and I find that brown is a little bit more forgiving than black so if you're gonna go in and learn how to do a winged liner I would suggest to start with a brown liner the black is going to show every little mistake every little you know squiggly line that you didn't get perfectly straight as to the brown is a little bit more forgiving so we're gonna use that for our liner and my teeny weeny NYX liner this is um just a nyx eyeliner pencil i don't know the color it's brown that's all i got because the um, <laughs> it's a little bit small and i have uh sharpened it down but it is from nyx and it is brown so any brown liner that will do you're going to put this in your tight line and in your water line and then we're going to go in with mascara now this is one of my favorite mascaras on the planet this is it cosmetics superhero i got this in like an ipsy glam bag or boxy charm or something a couple of years ago and i was like like, uh, it's fabulous. It's a little bit on the pricey side. Um, you could probably use the L'Oreal Voluminous Paradise um, Mascara, the one that's like the original or the Pink Tube is a good um, dupe for this. So we're going to do a wing. We're going to do finish off our liner. We're going to put on some mascara and I will come back and we will put some lashes on and we will get a lip on and we will finish this glam look. All right, so what a difference a little liner and a little mascara can make. So you could totally leave it right here, throw in your lipstick, and just head out the door. But, you know, I'm a little bit on the extra side, so we're going to put on some lashes. So these are the Lolita Lashes from the Makeup Institute. Now, these are mink lashes. If you don't want to wear mink lashes, you can always find a substitute for mink. Um, I really love these. These work with my eyes very well. I have smaller eyes, so I have to be careful on what lashes I wear because they can totally take over my face, and you won't be able to see any other of the eyeshadow that I put on because the lashes are so big. So we're going to pop these on and then we're going to finish off with the lip. All right, so the lashes are on and we're going to finish this look off with a lip. So this lip has not changed since the last video. It is my favorite. It is my go-to. I am obsessed with it and I've gone through probably about five or six tubes. So we're going to start off with the lip liner. We're going to go in with the Urban Decay Lip Liner in Liar. This is the 24-7 Glide on Pencil. And then we're going to put um, a little lipstick on from Maybelline, believe it or not, from the drugstore. So we're going to go in and line, and I'm going to try not to talk while I do this. And the upper lip. I 
just sharpen the stencil and it's not working. Not as smooth as I need it to be, but that's okay. I'm gonna go in with my finger and I like to kind of blend out that line so it's not so thick and heavy. Just like this. Now we're gonna go in with Maybelline Nearly There, number 205. I don't even have to look at the name because <laughs> I use it all the time. Get it at the drugstore, great value. We're gonna put this on. I'm not a very big lipstick like, um, what's the word? I can't even think of the word. What's the word I'm thinking for? Memory fog, here we go. This is what happens when you get old. Um, liquid lipstick. I'm not a very big fan of liquid lipstick. My lips dry out. I like something creamy. I like something that I can rub my lips and feel that it's on my lips. So this is why this is one of my go-to products. My next go-to product is of course from Hank and Henry and it is in the uh, lip, it's like a lip gloss, kind of got a little bit of glitter in it. I pronounce it Orle. I don't know if that's correct because I don't speak Spanish. I can tell you, I can speak Spanish enough to tell you that I can't speak Spanish. How about that? So O-R-A-L-E. There you go. So we're going to put this on the top. Just like that. And isn't it fabulous? Like it is one of my most favorite and most used. These two lipsticks right here, I've used these for probably about two to three years and I have not found anything that compares to them. So they are fabulous. So that is the makeup look and finish. You can finish it off with a setting spray, which I don't have in reach and I'm not going anywhere. So finish it off with a setting spray. Make sure that it stays in place for the rest of the day. And this is something that I would go to, minus the lashes. I would wear this to work. I would wear this out. I would wear this to the movies. I'd wear this to the club if I went to the club, but I don't. Um, I don't even think I ever went when I was younger. So, um, but I added the lashes just to give it that extra glam look that I find that, it, that the lashes just kind of finish it off. So it was literally two eyeshadows a little bit of highlighter on the lid, a wing liner, and a lash, and a nude lip. So it's very basic, but it's very, it's a statement, I think. I think it looks great, and I think it would look great on everybody in every skin tone. So if you like this video, let me know what else you want to see down in the comment box below. Please like and give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel, and please subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye. Bye.